this, it will be ready on Facebook. The resurrection. The resurrection is one of our main beliefs. If you know the, the, the Lord, uh, the Apostles' Creed, I don't know if you, when you were little, you learned the Apostles' Creed. Who learned the Apostles' Creed here? Yes. Oh, wow. Leanne, I know some, some of you. It talks about the resurrection. And as you read, if Christ wasn't raised from the dead, our faith is futile. Which that uh, phrase reminds me of the Star Trek. For those Star Trek people, resistance is futile. So your Christianity can be futile if the Lord Jesus didn't come back from the dead. Fifteen, uh, uh, verse nineteen of, of, of First Corinthians nineteen is, is a verse that uh, Jehovah's Witnesses love to quote to us uh, Protestants, Christians. And, they said, and he says this, If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most pity. Because they believe that Jesus came back from the dead spiritually. You know what they believe about the afterlife regarding Jesus? That Jesus' body is going to be held somewhere where everybody's going to go and see it, and everybody's going to say, Oh, great sacrifice for Jesus. But he came back from the dead spiritually. But did Jesus come back from the dead spiritually? No. In the book of Luke, you read, and I'm going to go through a lot of verses. As Pastor Andrew says, that, that, that he, he was very used to his iPad, and now he wants to go back to this. Because this, my, this uh, to, uh, um, to, to quote another, um, another Star Wars, <laughs> this is your life. Remember? Uh, second one from the, uh, well, what is it? Phantom Menace, and what's, what's next? <laughs> you remember, yeah? Yeah, do you remember? <laughs> do you remember? Uh, I remember the second one. Clone Wars. Yeah, Clone Wars, see? There's somebody who's not ashamed to... <laughs> In the Clone Wars, he says, uh, Obi-Wan says to John Darbeta, this is your life. And the first thing that came into my mind when I saw that, this is my life. Life and death is found in this book. So this book says in Luke that Jesus asked the disciples, touch me, touch me. Let's go, let, let's go to Luke chapter 24. Verses 37, oh, well, 30, 36. Luke chapter 24, verse 36. So we read the whole Corinthians. So, so that's uh, what I want you to know is scripture where you can find the resurrection. That's what I want to know. You read the whole the whole book of, the whole chapter of Corinthians. Now I want you to find other verses where you can defend your faith. While they were still talking about this, Jesus Himself stood among them and said to them, "Peace be with you." They were startled and frightened, thinking. They saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubling? Why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. So Jehovah's Witnesses may say that Jesus was resurrected in the spirit. The Bible says that he was resurrected in the flesh. But as you read in Corinthians, it's not your typical flesh like, like ours. That flesh can go to heaven. That's why our flesh, when that resurrection comes, that's when we are raptured to heaven. So that's the Christian faith. And, if, and, and somebody always asks me, because uh, uh, I was thinking when Pastor Andrew called me, and he said, oh, so what are you going to preach? And I said, oh, I'm going to preach of what people at church ask me. Because I always get this question from many of you. Will we remember what happened on earth when we are resurrected or in heaven? We will. 
And we will remember even the bad things. Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. And you will see what some, some of us, maybe not in this church, but some of our brothers and sisters, remind the Lord to do. Chapter 6 of Revelation, verse 7. Uh, verse 9. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God, and some, some of them have, are still being slain today. Uh, Christianity is the most persecuted faith on the face of the earth. So when people say that uh, all these issues that are going on, you know, in the news, it doesn't stop the devil to attack us. The devil is attacking us from persecution to all these things that we see on TV. So, Nine, because of the word of, the, of God and the testimony they have maintained. They call out in a loud voice. See how, see how, see what they, they still remember what happened. What do they say? How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge your blood? So you remember what happened here. You do remember. But you will also remember the good things. Because Jesus remind, remembered his disciples. He remembered that he had to take care of them. He remembered the promises. So there's life after death. But it's not a type of life that you just die. And I remember when I was, I was 15, this pastor said, Oh, when I, when I want to wake up, I want to I wanna wake up and open my eyes and say, It was true. Come on, you didn't believe it at the first place. <laughs> if you say it was true, you never believed it. But when you open your eyes, I always tell my, 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 um, my wife, uh, my kids and people I know, I hope I, the, the first things I will see, I hope, I don't know if it's going to be Peter. <laughs> but I know I see the Lord because the Lord is there. But I will see my grandma, I will see my people that I love that are gone before me. And that's part of the Christian hope. And that's in the Bible. But we're going to start first. If you want all these verses, uh, there's a paper at the back that I that, that I um, that, that I um, printed. Genesis 37, 35. See, from the beginning, some people say that Christians. So go to Genesis 37, 35. Some people say that from the beginning, um, the the Bible doesn't teach about the afterlife. Well, I beg to differ. Genesis 37, 35 says the following. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. And grave here is not actually the word grave, it's Sheol. Have you heard that word, Sheol? Old Testament term? So Sheol, and I'm going to explain... We're going to go a little bit little, and I'm going to explain what Sheol is. So he's joining, actually. He's joining his son in the grave. When, when, uh, when um, Jacob told that, um, that Joseph was dead. So he will join him. They will meet with him. So they, they already thought about an afterlife that you will get together. As, as an announcement, um, my, my, my mother-in-law, she is... She only had some time to live, and one of the things that she told me was that she had a dream. In that dream, both her mom and, and her mother-in-law were inviting her to come to be with the Lord. So what happens is that is we, we, we experience pain when we lose someone. But remember that that someone, as a Christian, as a Christian, we believe that that someone's going to meet up with their loved ones as well. And like I said to, 
to, uh, to my mother-in-law, I will call her Mamita Eri. I'm going to catch up with you, but not so soon, hopefully. <laughs> It'll take some time. But as a Christian, you can talk about death. And yes, it hurts. It hurts to see your, your loved one suffering because she has cancer all over the, all the bones. But she has this faith that she will meet with, his, with her um, uh, family and the Lord. And that's our faith. That's the Christian faith. That's where we stand. And we, as, as we see in, uh, in the book of uh, in Thessalonians, it says, comfort each other with this. It's comforting to know that all of us will be again together. Genesis 42, 38. Genesis 42, 38. And maybe you can, as we have in there, maybe you can, you, you can be ahead of me and then I read it and then I say something about it. 42, 38. But Jacob said, my son will not go down there with you. His brother is dead, and he is the only one left. If harm comes to him on the journey you're taking, you will bring my great head down to Sheol in sorrow. To Sheol, again, to the grave. To Sheol. So Sheol was where they thought that the good people went and the bad people went. Can you see that in number 16? In number 16, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a very, um, if you can read later the, the, whole, the whole event there, but uh, the earth opens up and it's, and it's a people. So number 1630 says, but if the Lord brings about something totally new and the air opens its mouth and swallows them with everything that belongs to them, and they go down alive in the realm of the dead, Sheol. Then you will know that these men have treated the Lord with contempt. So imagine if we have someone here that said, No, brother, you have sinned. Confess your sin. No, I don't want to confess. So the Lord, the Lord reveals to us that you have sinned. And the, 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 the air opens up and swallows them. And it doesn't swallow only them. It swallows their wives their children, their cattle, everything. Because of sin. But there's a place of the dead. Sheol. So, the good people go, because we read that Jacob was good, yeah? <laughs> Jacob was good, so he goes to Sheol. These bad people go to Sheol. And then Psalm 140, uh, 141.7 seven. It uses the same word as we have seen it for grave. Grave, grave. And again, that's what Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe that, that the grave is the last place we are and we wait till the resurrection. So what they believe is this, that when you die, you go to sleep and you don't know what's going on. Not even on earth or in heaven. You don't, it's like you cease to exist for, in the meantime, the Lord comes back. That's what they believe. But the, but the Bible teaches something else. And we will see later on. So in Psalm 49, 15, the wicked remain in Sheol. And this is where we're looking, the first glimpses that we start looking of a resurrection. Uh, in Psalm 49, 15 says the following. 49, 15. But God will redeem me from the realm of the dead, from Sheol. He will surely take me to himself. And that's the difference from um, Christianity and Hinduism. In Hinduism, the highest, the highest spiritual thing that you can go up is to become one with the, with the, hum, with the Om. Am I right? Those who know what I'm looking at you. <laughs> you may know more than me about this. But you become one with this being. But you cease to have a consciousness. You cease to have consciousness. But you become one with the um. But the Bible doesn't teach that about us. The Bible teaches that, as we saw in the book of Revelation, we still complain. We still say, Lord, when are you going to take revenge on our enemies? So we still have consciousness. 
So, from Psalm 49, 15, we can see that the Lord will redeem me from the realm of the dead. So, if the, the Lord will, rem- will, will redeem us from Sheol, what is he going to do? Let's go to Job 19, 25, and 27. And I love these verses because, uh, because critics say the Jewish people believed in resurrection until they went to Persia, until they were deported to Persia, or until they encountered the Greeks. But the Greeks didn't believe in the, ref- in, in the resurrection. I don't know why they say that, but anyway. <laughs> They don't believe in the resurrection. They believe that uh, you go to the to Gehenna and you stay there. If you've been good, you stay there in a good place in Gehenna. And if you've been bad, you go to Elysium. I don't know if you if, I don't know if you ever heard that that, that movie. That, there's a movie about it. See, I watch movies. I'm sorry. <laughs> Elysium. Huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> Maybe some people say spend a lot of time watching movies. Netflix, blame it on Netflix. <laughs> so Elysium is the place, the ideal place for the Greeks, but there's no resurrection. There's no resurrection for the Greeks. But anyway, Job 19:25-27. If if somebody has it, can they can they read it, please? Job 19, 25, uh, chapter 19, verse 25 and 27. To 27. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I am not, an, not another. How my heart turns to him. Doesn't, sound, doesn't that sound like a resurrection? Because he says, I know that my Redeemer lives. And that's the song that we sing. And that in the, in the end he will stand, he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, that sounds like you're in the, in the grave. Yet in my flesh I will see God. Well, it's been destroyed, but then again the flesh comes back. I myself will see him with my own eyes and not another. So you will be restored in the resurrection. So even from the times of Job, which is, we go back to the time of the patriarchs. They, they still believe in the resurrection. So this is not a new thing that the Jews made up after the, after the diaspora or after getting in touch with the Greeks. And we read something, um, we read something when, in the book of, um, when we were reading, and I, um, let us drink and, and eat, and the tomorrow we die, that comes from Isaiah. But I, death has been swallowed up in victory. That comes from Isaiah 25, 8. And if you read Isaiah uh, uh, 25 and 26, you will find many, many verses that talk about the resurrection, about the next next life. So we can trust that the Bible, even in the Old Testament, tells us. See, 26 says, uh, 26 says, 26, 19, "By by your death will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Let, let those who dwell in the dust. Does that remind you of something we read before? I, uh, Daniel? By your day we will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. You do, your dew is like the dew of the morning. The air will give birth to her death. So, from that before they were dispersed all over the earth, the Jews believed that there was going to be a resurrection. I wonder how these scholars, critical scholars, that I have to read them all the time, um, how they come to terms that say, oh, no, 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 it's later, later. It's until Daniel. Let's go to Daniel, finally, to get out of the Old Testament. Uh, Daniel 12. Daniel 12, 1 to 3. 1 to 3, not to 13, sorry. Although you could read all the all way to the end. <laughs> At that time, Michael, the great prince. <clears throat> yeah, Michael. <laughs> there we have a Michael here. So. <laughs> well, he's a prince to you, yeah, Mary. 
At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at the time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book. And we're going to see this again. What does this sound like? Book of life. In chapter what revelation? Who can tell me? Chapter 20. And the books were opened. And those who were not found in the books were thrown into the lake of fire. Well, anyway, we're going to read that too. But what I, wanna, what I want you to, to, to get is that the Bible is quoting itself all the time. It's quoting itself all the time. There, when, when you read scripture, always come to think, where have I read this before? Where is this again? So that's, that, that's how it, when Paul talks about things, and he's starting to talk about things, and, and I didn't understand, and then I said, wait a minute, he's talking about the Old Testament. And he's talking about the Old Testament all the time. In, in the book of Revelation, in the book of um, Hebrews, are the ones who have the most quotes of the Old Testament in the whole of the New Testament. So if you haven't read that Old Testament, let me encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to read it in order to understand it. Because or else we read it and we don't, we're lost. I mean, it's, it's something that hit me the other day. But at the time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust. Remember what, 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 uh, what Job said, the dust. So again, Daniel again quotes uh, uh, something that Job said. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the air will awake. Some to everlasting life. Others to shame everlasting. Those of us who are with Jesus, we're going to everlasting life. Amen? Amen. That's why we want those people who don't know Jesus, that they know that if you don't, if you don't know Jesus, if you, if you don't follow him, if he's not your Lord, you'll be resurrected to an everlasting death, shame, and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. That's what, what a promise. You would shine like the stars. And those who lead many to righteousness, those who bring people to the Lord Jesus, like the stars forever and ever. So, in the, so if in this lifetime you're not a rock star, if in this lifetime you're not some, a big star of Hollywood, be assured that in, in eternity we will be like stars. But now let's go to the next one, uh, intertestamental references. And that's why I brought another Bible. Who can find a book in their Bible? Yes, some of you are saying you could. <laughs> that book is not in our Bible, in the first Bible. Second Maccabees. That book is in the... Catholic version of the Bible, which I, um, I, I have here, Apocrypha. Uh, in, and let me just tell you one minute what it is. The Apocrypha uh, is based, uh, they call it Apocrypha because there are books that at the end, uh, they, they were at the end of the, of the Bible of the Old Testament, in the Greek version of the Bible at the time of Jesus. And what happened was that some Jews used it very much, but around the, the year 70, uh, there was a council among Jewish people, and they said, well, we're going to just have what we have in the Bible, the, the, the person. But Jerome, if you remember Jerome, he was the, a, a church father, and he, and he translated the Bible from the original languages to Latin, which was the language of the time. He included the, those books. Martin Luther says that they're good to read. I read them, uh, they're good, and they show us how the Jews believe and what they practice. And so, so, so that's what the Apocrypha is. But in, in, in Maccabees, 2 Maccabees 7, 1 to 14, it talks, it talks about the resurrection as well. But it says this, these people are being tortured because they don't want to eat pig. 
They are being killed because they don't want to eat pig. They don't want to eat swine. So the Greeks were killing them. They killed seven brothers and the mother. That's the story. And he says, Will you eat rather than have your body punished limb by limb? He replied in the language of his ancestors and said to them. So he replied in Hebrew, No. Therefore, he in turn underwent tortures as the, as the first brother had done. And when he was at his last breath, he said, You accursed wretch, you dismiss us from this present life, but the king of the universe will raise us up in an everlasting renewal of life because we have died for his love. Sounds like Daniel, yeah? Sounds like Daniel. And then they have another, uh, uh, they have three more, and, and uh, finally the mother dies. So they kill all of them, they kill the seven brothers. And, they, and three of them talk about the resurrection, the life. So the Jews believe in the resurrection. But then we come to Jesus, and this is the, the most important thing. Jesus comes from the bosom of the Father. Therefore, he knows the Father best. Amen? That's why when, uh, when um, and I'm going to mention this one, so Mormons come to my house and they said, oh, you know, we have this prophet, Joseph Smith, and the Lord has revealed to him this thing, and I go back to Hebrews if you can go back just for this, just for this. Hebrews, just to defend your faith, my brothers and sisters. Because I know you get also the, 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 the knock at the door and they want to share with you. And eh, it's good to talk to them. I, I don't mind talking to them. Uh, but the thing is that you have to know how to answer them. So Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. Listen. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times in a various ways. But in the last days, he has spoken to us to his, by his son, whom he appointed heir in all, of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. So who am I going to believe? Am I going to believe Joseph Smith, who was killed in a revolt, or am I going to believe the one who rules the universe? I'm going to believe Jesus, of course. So that's the way you answer them. <laughs> Very politely, I said, okay, uh, this is what Jesus is the last one, the last prophet. There's no more. Because there's another one who said that he was also the last prophet. The religion that, that is growing faster than ever. He also said that he was the last prophet. And what did Jesus say? After me, there will be many false prophets. So, after Jesus, my brothers and sisters, no more prophets. At the, at the level of Jesus, because you, you know we have prophets later in Corinthians, but not like Jesus. So, Sheol, we go now to New Testament views, and we're going to be finishing soon. Sheol, I, um, if do you remember the parable, the parable of of the um, Lazarus, that he goes to uh, that he goes to um, he goes to Sheol, and by that time. The Jews call the good side of Sheol, where the Jews went, they call it Abraham's bosom. So, it goes like this. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was a little beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. Now the NIV has changed bosom to side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, Hades is the translation of the Hebrew Sheol. Okay? In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus, Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. So Sheol was one season. Sheol, the power of the righteous was, like I said, Elysium, something like that, like everybody was fine, but the other side where the wicked were, it was fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you will receive your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, and besides all this, between us, you, uh, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot come, nor can anyone across 
anyone cross from there from there to us. So there was still the belief of Sheol. They call it Hades because that was the translation. But there you go. So that's what they believe. But they also believe in the resurrection the last day. Again with Lazarus. I don't know if this is the same Lazarus. I, I actually, actually, I don't know. But if you go to, uh, I don't think so. You go to John uh, 11. You go to John 11. 21 to 27. When Lazarus dies. Remember, uh, I'm going to start reading. Lord 11, I mean John 11, uh, verse 21. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had come, if you had been here, but my brother would have lived, that who would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And listen to Jesus. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by, lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. Do you believe this, church? Yes. That even though you die, you will live. That's a promise. That's the promise of the Lord Jesus to us. That's what keeps us hanging, hanging to the Lord, because He has never failed us. He has never failed us, my brothers and sisters. And that's why the Christian faith is the only one revealed from God to us. There are many ways that people think that they are paths of life, but they lead to death. There's only one way, Jesus. So, but what happens between death and resurrection? Well, we read one. We read about what, how we complain, <laughs> how we complain uh, in heaven. But let me read you another one. Philippians, Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 and 24. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, 24. Paul is in jail. He, he doesn't know he's going to be killed, so he writes this. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. So Paul wasn't afraid of dying. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the, between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. So Paul says, I'm going to continue suffering because I love you guys. And I'm going to ask the Lord to continue here in jail because I want you to be with you. I want to be a blessing to you. Because Paul wanted to go with the Lord. So, convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So what happens when you die? We go to the Lord. You don't go to sleep. We go to the Lord. And I love what uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 10, 11, also Paul reminds the believers that when we die, we go to the Lord. That's where we are, and that's where we're going to stay. It says, He died, talking about Jesus, for us, so that whatever we, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. We, if you're asleep, you don't know what's going on. But we are here with the Lord, and we die, we are with the Lord as well. We are not by ourselves. A lot of people, when they die, they are afraid of dying. Why? Because they think, oh, I'm going to be alone, alone. And no, we know that the Lord is with us to the end. And the last day, and if you keep uh, hearing um, 
in, in, Th in Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. And I remember Matthew, Matthew asked me this a long time ago. And I said, okay, let's read the Bible then. Let's read Matthew, uh, I mean, uh, let, let, let's read 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 5, 11. But I'm going to read this part. Those of us who have lost people, this is very important for us to listen. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. That's why we ask for the last minute to our sister, to our brother, to our father, please accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior so when he comes, you come with him. That's why. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, we will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And this we read in Corinthians. When are we going to be, um, when is it that we're going to be a change? When the trumpet sounds. Verse 52. In the flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound that they will be raised and perishable. And then he says it again here in Thessalonians. And Jesus said it in Matthew. In Matthew, where, where, where am I? In Matthew 24, 31, again, Jesus talks about the trumpet. And again, in a book of Revelation, talks about the trumpet. So this theme about trumpet and going to heaven, being transformed, keeps coming, coming, and coming. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with a voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the day in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet, in the, to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, therefore, encourage one another with these words. The teaching of the end for Christians it's not something to be afraid of. We watch apocalyptic movies. Oh, so afraid. No. It, we're going to be saved. We are going to be saved. And as it says there, uh, we will receive a new body. First Corinthians, you, you can go back. There's a paper in the back because I have to finish. We'll receive a new body. First Corinthians 15, 53 and 54. We read it. The imperishable, the imperishable will clothe itself of, of imperishable. So we are going to get everything back. Our joints. I'm 45. I'm not that old for, for some of you. <laughs> for, for, for my children, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> so I go like this sometimes. And it hurts. Now it's starting to hurt. I said, what's going on? I mean, I remember when I was a little kid, I used to, I used to, I didn't care. But now it hurts. So, so sometimes I get, I get tired. I said, why? I used to only sleep for hours and I used to stay all the whole day. But not anymore. It means that I'm, that age is catching up to me. I still think uh, when I see myself, I said, I used to have a lot of hair. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. My wife didn't like this jacket when we were coming here, and she said, I don't like it because it's an old jacket. I don't want you to to to, to dress in that jacket today. And I look at her and said, Well, you're old, and I still like you. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened was that she told me, I don't hit you because you're driving. <laughs> then we can all die. So 1 Corinthians 15, 53, and 54, and 2 Corinthians 5, and, 1, and, and 5, and, and I'm just giving you certain verses. I'm not giving you the whole lot, but I'm giving you enough for you to know where to find them. We are going to get new bodies. I don't know how old we're going to be in eternity, but we're going to get new bodies. I, I only can remember my, my, my grandma being resurrected. And I said, who are you? I'm your grandma. You, uh, you don't look like my grandma. <laughs> but that's the way it's going to be. Revelation 20, 21, final state of creation and believers. I just want to tell you this. The final thing is that at the end, the good people go to heaven, or, or actually heaven will come down. Because in, that's why you read chapter, Revelation chapter 20 to 21. You want to know what the end, 
what's going to happen at the end, that's going to happen. Read it, and you will find out that the Lord, that, that, that God will come down from heaven, live with us here. We're not like other people that they think that we're going to go to maybe some other universe. No, no. God will make this place again. What you saw in Genesis 1, that's why I wanted to preach about this, because Pastor Andrew has been talking about it. What you saw in Genesis 1 and 2, we're going to see it again. We're going to see it again. That's the promise. That's the promise. No more death. No more crying. No more pain. No more old jackets. <laughs> no more death, and God will be among all. And we will meet our loved ones. First Thessalonians 4, 13 to 15. We read it. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that something to look forward? Isn't that something to hang on to your faith, my brothers and sisters? No matter what. No matter what. Those people who have died for their faith. You know, those people who have been decapitated in, in, in Egypt, in the Middle East. Those people who have been persecuted in India or, or somewhere. I, I, I saw just in the news that they burned the whole church with a the, with the pastor, the, 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 the pastor, the wife, and the three kids. They burned them, all of them. But they didn't give up because they have a better place to go. And they have a promise that they will live forever with the Lord and with the loved ones. Let us pray. You have been good to us, Lord. Because you have given us good promises that no one can give it to us because no one can keep them. Only you. So we pray, Lord, that today we can affirm our faith in you and let us share this gospel so our loved ones, our friends, and anybody can come to you and be saved and have eternal life. In the name of Jesus. Amen.